with Hellfire Security, my own little enterprise. An overview of today's talk. We'll start with the stages set by what your hosts are up to, followed by isolation occurs as I show you uh, what PMAP reveals about your hosts. Tensions built, where we will use PMAP to stalk our prey. Individuals identified as victims. As you can see, there is a horror movie theme going here. Finally, endgame, where the attack begins. It all starts with see no evil, hear no evil. Something is going on, but not a lot of people are really paying attention. In our case, it's advertising. And not the traditional advertising, router advertising, but routers, printers, appliances, Windows hosts, Apple hosts, Linux hosts, everything. Broadcast and multicast messages to their peers, back and forth advertising, basically resolving names, sending updates, getting configuration, finding services. It's all about cooperation by sharing what you have. But it is important to listen to the crazy guy, and I think that you can figure out today who the crazy guy is. Because there are implications to all this advertising. Messaging to educate peers can also educate attackers. No authentication, indiscriminate distribution, for a peer, it's part of the cooperation. They're just sharing. For an attacker, it is available attack service. So we have hosts on the local segment. They, they travel in packs. They are advertising back and forth, sharing information with one another. And it all starts with UDP. It is the underlying protocol for advertising. Broadcasts and multicasts are over UDP. It's from this, uh, this broadcast traffic, from this multicast traffic, that EMAP is able to enumerate hosts, perform a host discovery. And much of this traffic is server to server. Server to server, fixed ports. A fixed port is an open port. EMAP is able to perform a UDP port scan, as well uh, as the fixed server to server, uh, fixed source port and destination ports. There are also unique source and destination port pairs that when PMAP sees this, it is able to enumerate the source port as open. Um, we have some examples here. We have the 47808, 57621. There's a unique uh, pair there. 68 and 67, DHCP 138, 1900. Uh, this all contributes to UDP port enumeration, allowing PMAP to perform a UDP port scan on these hosts. Okay. Now, today what we're going to be covering is some very basic functions that PMAP is able to perform, but there's additional information that can be extracted to perform more advanced functions. Some very, very uh, simple examples here, the 47808. 47808 is a port that is used primarily uh, for SCADA protocols. So when this port is in use, PMAP can start building a fingerprint of the host, realizing that this is SCADA equipment. Okay. In addition, you, there are, are contributions to profiling. We have the 6867. We see some DHCP activity there. We begin to realize the relationship that this host has on the network. It is being uh, dynamically assigned an address. It's a client PC. Okay, so we're talking about a lot of basic functions. PMAP extracting additional information and then performing some more advanced functions. Just starting here with a uh, fingerprint and a little bit of a profiling of this host and its relationships to the other hosts on the network. Okay. A lot of this advertising is about asking for directions. Where do I find this? Where do I find this host, this service? Where can I get this information from? 
asking for directions. The first protocol that is involved in this advertising is multicast DNS. It is peer-to-peer -peer name resolution. A host is looking to resolve a name to an address. It multicasts out the query. All the peers see it. Any host that has this record to resolve multicast out the response. All of the peers receive this. PMAP then is able to add names to the host. Starts adding that, starts filling in that information. Uh, everything is multicasted out. This is continuous and ongoing. It's important to remember because the more this is going on, the more information PMAP is able to extract, more information that is able to add to, to the uh, well, to the host discovery, to the scanning, the fingerprinting, and profiling. I'm going to uh, show you some examples now uh, of some some of these uh, responses here as they're advertised and then enumerated by PMAP. We have all these host names that now get to be added to the host. Okay, the addresses. Now that's the, of course, simple, very basic function talking about extracting additional information. We have the iPod there, the iPhone, the iPad. Turns out the way the iDevices formulate or format the name, adds together information, one of it actually being the uh, owner name, but it also adds in there the device type. Turns out to be a pretty reliable way of fingerprinting these devices. And then talking about uh, taking more information out, starting uh, to not just do the fingerprinting, but also the profiling. We have uh, Bonnie Hoffman there, someone from the EFF, uh, Toya Rush, I won't go on but, uh, with the names, they're just, they're out there and anytime that I use PMAP, it's just name after name after name, I don't think people quite realize what is being uh, sent out there, this information about themselves. So very basic function, adding, you know, adding the host names uh, to the host, to the addresses that you're uh, discovering, and then of course, advanced functions fingerprinting and profiling. The next uh, protocol that's involved in this advertising is DNS service discovery. Peer-to-peer -peer service discovery. It uh, works over multicast DNS, meaning that it is fully compliant, that continuous querying and responding. The host that is interested in a particular service will multicast out a query for a shared pointer record let's say HTTP, the host that has that service, all the hosts that have that service, will carry the shared pointer record and multicast out a shared pointer record that refers back to a unique service and text record. The unique service and text record is then, like, the host queries for it, they uh, respond, and then a host, uh, the host responding this, well, they, they get enumerated because in that service record is a open TCP port and, and the text record that comes with it is a whole lot of information that allows you to then build on the bare basic function to the advanced function fingerprinting and it gets very specific as well as service setup configuration so very very basic function now PMAP is able to do a TCP port scan trying to round it out and it also can then advance with this additional information which I will show you in just a minute, fingerprint and profile. There are our open TCP ports, 21, 22, 80, all the basics. 4301, 5000, 8101, TCP port scan, PMAP is able to do. And this is where it gets really fun. Those text records, there's actually more information you can pull out of the service record. Uh, the, the real fun is the text record, but you're still able to get a lot of information out of that service record. When PMAP sees the IPP, TCP local uh, service name, knows it's a printer. Right? And when it is able to get the device type, then can reach into the text record and get a make and model. HP Color Laser Jet 4700, there's server setup information for PMAP, an admin URL, a, a note that, well, they're very nice, they were including the building that the printer is in, as well as a person that uh, has a relationship to the printer, either sitting next to it or servicing the printer. 
So it is just kind of a gift that just keeps on giving. Uh, and what we have here, another record that is a TiVo videos uh, record. When a host returns this, advertises this, then PMAP is able to fingerprint it as well, a DVR, TiVo DVR. And then it goes into the text record, and you've got software versions, you've got, it, you know, this is a path, but it's more or less commands and text, as well as the protocol that you can submit commands to. So this is all information that is advertised out, and there are two more. A workstation record that when it is returned, uh, PMAP can fingerprint that device as a PC running Linux. And then a very special record here, a device info text record that is asked for and in return allows PMAP to fingerprint the host as a PC, an Apple PC, and pulls out the model there. So we get the model MacBook Pro. There's apparently a lot of Macs here this weekend, so, or this week. Okay. So, basic function, extracting additional information, and then doing the more advanced functions. The last protocol that is involved in this advertising that is uh, so far in PMAP is SSVP, Simple Service Discovery Protocol. Well, you know, Apple has to come up with something, right? And then Microsoft wants to have a Me Too moment. The multicast DNS and the DNS service discovery over multicast DNS is actually Apple's the zero configuration uh, initiative. And Microsoft came up and uh, rolled in SSDP into the OU, the PNP uh, movement. And so it's basically another peer to peer service discovery protocol. HTTP over UDP, there are notifications, which are our advertisements that are being regularly sent out onto the network. And rather than being used for a very basic function first, you can immediately move to the fingerprinting. Notifications, the top one. That is a server header that belongs to a Samsung phone running Android. Very often, able to get the actual version like 4.0.4, point There's actually an open port there, though PMAP does not utilize that right now. We have a second notification. This is an obvious one, Microsoft Windows, so Windows XP. Okay. These are very precise fingerprints. Uh, these hosts, they pretty much tell you exactly what operating system, what type of device they are. So with all this information building up, building up, you have this kind of ominous fog going on the local segment. But it's important to know that there are some limitations. That word that I'm using is very uh, self very telling. Your limitations really boil down to the layer two boundaries, the broadcast domain and media entertainment, which is fine because PMAP lives on the local segment it operates on a local segment. There's plenty to be advertised out there, a lot of advertising going on. Uh, you have more than enough in a local segment to not be really worried about this. This is not a big deal. Now, at this point in time, defenders don't seem to be very interested in this sort of advertising. They have a very typical perspective. Hold on, I'll go back for a second there. I'm kind of beating up on someone there. Yeah. So. Not that they're really doing that all the time, but sometimes they react negatively. The typical perspective is this, this is just noise. Uh, and my favorite, that these hosts are behind a firewall, which is not quite so valid anymore. I think about 20 years ago it was valid, but you have contractors in the building, you have attackers that are able to easily bypass physical security and can enter a building and operate on that local segment. You have remote compromises. Uh, there's an executable for PMAP. There's also a Metasploit script, so you can have a remote compromise and then a remote profiling. You have such the um, you know the hard shell soft center problem. You also have a variety of different segments now that are being added to the network. Your your guest uh, wireless network. You'll have a wireless network for guests. You know, the wireless network for the warehouse, for the factory, <coughs> all these things, you know, the firewall is not really in play. Then you have 
more public networks, like uh, from a hyper perspective, where you have like a hotel that they have a private corporate network, and then they have a public network that is set aside for customers. There is exposure there, and therefore risk because there is corporate equipment on that public segment to support the customers. And then you have the truly public spaces, your malls, your Starbucks. That's a, a problem. There is exposure and therefore risk because you have a lot of corporate devices roaming about. You have tablets, you have laptops. And the flip side of that, you have a lot of BYOD that is out there. They, they, these things can be compromised or you know, right back into the you know, past the firewall. You know, the iPads, the iPhones, all that sort of thing. They can be profiled, compromised, and then right back in. So the firewall, it, you know, it's just to say everything behind a firewall isn't quite as valid as it used to be. And then of course there is something will break, which is partially true, but it doesn't mean you don't try to minimize your risk. You know, uh, limit the advertising as much as possible so that you don't have quite the exposure. This, mean, this means, of course, that an attacker with PMAP, his reign of terror can begin. Slaying in the rain. Okay. There's a lot of uh, Friday, Friday the 13th imagery here. Seem to fit. Now, I'm about to start the demonstrations, and I will be taking on the role of a, a traditional, you know, a regular old uh, hacker here, an attacker. I have a volunteer here today, and as you can see, he is outfitted with uh, PMAP. Now, if you have seen a previous presentation of mine, then you probably already know who this is, but uh, don't worry, I will be revealing his identity at the end of the talk, as well as some words of wisdom. All right, so let's get started. He is outfitted with PMAP version 1.00 for Windows. Discovery scanning and fingerprinting via broadcast and multicast traffic. The fingerprint often contains device type make, model, service configuration, versions. There is an Nmap-like output. Uh, there are standalone and agent modes. I won't be demonstrating the agent mode uh, today, uh, but needless to say, what it allows you to do is feed a subset of PMAP's output to the syslog server, so that you can keep an eye on the kind of advertising that's going on uh, on your network, especially certain segments that you are concerned about. And then uh, there is a Metasploit script that allows you to do a remote profile. Okay, let's start off with some basic usage. And I am going to make sure that my traffic is playing back. Okay. Let's start off with the help screen. Like any good Discovery, scanning, fingerprinting tool, you want to be able to give it a range. There we go. We have the ports, agent mode, function you're interested in, discovery only, discovery and scan, or everything. Uh, we also have a verbose mode. Now, when you are doing the discovery or the discovery and scan, it's going to go ahead and report immediately everything that is being advertised. If you are doing everything, the discover, the scan, and the fingerprinting, it's actually going to collect for a while, a default time of 300 seconds or five minutes. When it does this, it's going to collect this information, and if you put it in verbose mode, it's going to go ahead and dump all the name records, the, you know, the name records for the, for the host, the A records, and all the service and text records, everything that it collects, as well as the SSDP notifications because I am just starting with the fingerprint database. There is a lot more to go. So it's important for a user to be able to see what the map is collecting. Well, if you can fingerprint something that is not available in PMAP, you know, then so much the better. So that is there for this. And then there are the seconds, because you can tell it to collect information for less time or more time, depending upon the amount of advertising. Uh, that, that's going on on the segment. I have found that the advertising is generally quite plentiful. So you're really, for the most part, 
lengthening the time just to get more hosts and to get more information about those hosts and to build a more complete uh, fingerprint and profile. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with uh, discovery. Yeah, so that's just direct output. This was from a large enterprise network played back at the same rate at, at, it, at which it was captured. I'm going to have it scan and tell it that I only am interested in printer ports, particular ports that printers use. Now, because I'm dependent upon the advertising of the host, in this case, because I'm looking for something very specific, it may take some time to get what you're looking for. In fact, if it doesn't show up a while, I'll just go ahead and move on. There we go. Hopefully I didn't fat finger any of the ports or misremember. You'll see blocks of them because you've got one host asking for a service. All the hosts that have that service will respond all at once. So you'll see all their open ports all at once. How much today it looks like. It's actually a really large capture, so just poor timing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on and do kind of an all there. This is where I've got to talk a bit more. I'm going to tell it to run for 30 seconds because I don't think you really want to sit here and stare at a black screen for a while. Uh, you want to see things happen. So it's going to go ahead now, and rather than pushing everything to, to the screen right away, it's going to collect this information, this all discovery, the scanning, and then it's going to go parse it, start fingerprinting and profiling. When it does this, it's going to write it to a file. And it's going to the file is going to go right to the directory you're in, and it's going to have a nice name here, which we'll see in just a second. Let me move that. There we go. Nice little message. Ooh. Profiling complete down there. All right, so we have a folder here, and as you can see, I've been running it today in the last couple of days. <coughs> I'm sure some of you are in there. All right, so we see, oh, you know, I think I actually jumped ahead. I need to get back to my slides here. That was a basic usage because it, um, before I start going through all the different types of hosts uh, that this shows up, it's important to kind of put this in perspective. Because, you know, PMAP is about stalking prey. You're an attacker. Hopefully you're a penetration tester or a network defender. Um, when I say attacker, I am, of course, referring to that always. Um, it's about finding hosts, it's about finding vulnerable hosts, it's about stalking prey. So it's time for casual Friday the 13th, the new temp. Right, it's going into the office there. Now, when we talk about looking for prey, we talk about the ones that are generally the first to go. When you are starting an attack campaign, there are ones that you have a great interest in, the ones that have a lot of vulnerabilities, the ones that, that just very easy to compromise to get that foothold. So there are ones that are the first to go, isn't it? Right, a little dancing in. Hopefully you uh, recognize who that is. So uh, there are the two types that generally people pick on, you know, your Windows hosts have been picked on for quite a while. And I'll show you how easy it is for PMAP to identify, let me move on to that. You know, how easy it is for PMAP to identify Windows hosts. I'm gonna show you first how easy it is to identify the second type, which is more popular now, printers. Okay? Uh, printers are full of vulnerabilities and doing a lot of stupid things on the network. Uh, they're being used for a lot now for pivots. You've seen some presentations, that kind of etc. People are picking on printers. So I'm going to show you actually some output rather than have it run over and over again and make you wait. There we are. So this is some output. Okay, can everyone see that? Okay. All right. So this is some output from a default run, 300 seconds. 
we got a Linux PC there, open ports. You know, it's got the address, the name, device type, OS, open ports. But we're looking for printers. So there's a Linux there. Another Linux down here. So those are well represented. But the ones that are first to go, the ones that are targeted first by an attack are generally the weak points. It's very easy for PMAP to identify those. We have an HP Color Laser Jet 5550. We have a name, address, open ports. But your HP Color Laser Jet 4700. Lots of ports there. Hard to see the cursor. All right, so we have an HP Laser Jet 4350. HP Color Laser Jet 5550, just on and on and on. So very easy for PMAP to identify those targets that an attacker is interested in going after first. Now, I'm going to try to make sure I actually stay on my slides as opposed to going ahead. That was using the executable for a local profiling on the way to you know local compromise. But what about doing something remote? What about a remote profiling? You've compromised a, let's say, a DMZ host or a host on the inside. You want to then do a, a profile, a remote profile, a silent profile, not wanting to trigger the IPSs to continue uh, your attack campaign. So I'm going to demonstrate one here. I have this running. I have Metasploit uh, set up on a backtrack. And since a Windows host I'm going to pick on with a, a favorite, I think. MS 08-067. A little delay there. And then I'm going to run PMAP. I'm going to tell it to only run for 100 seconds, which of course means I need to talk about something for 100 seconds. I think that's right. So there we go. All the basics, starting packet capture on interface one, packet capture, capture started, where the packets are being saved in case you want to use them later for something else. The interval uh, of 30 seconds, it's telling the compromised host to collect packets. It's gonna grab a chunk of those packets every 30 seconds. Uh, has anyone here used Packet Recorder uh, by Carlos Perez? Anybody? Anybody? Um, if you have, you will recognize some of that output. I, I did borrow his code for the uh, for the capture, so you'll recognize all those. Now, the default behavior of this is to load it into the database, the Metasploit database. But you can tell it to write to file. There's a dash w to write it to file. That is important because once you write it to file, you can then tell it to operate in verbose mode. It's only available when it's writing the file because there's really, it's not that I know a place for that kind of information to go to in the Metasploit database. Uh, so most of the options are available um, on the Metasploit script. So it does that write to file, the verbose mode. You can also, of course, tell it uh, to vary or how many seconds you want it to run right there. Should be done pretty soon. I think I've talked for three and a half minutes. So, as I said, they got the path up there. Yeah, the remote does that. So we have the path up there to where the packets go, logs, scripts, PMAP. That is the host name that you're running it on. And then a date, timestamp, that sort of thing. I did only tell it 100 seconds, right? Okay. So this is collecting all that information on remote host. Uh, the nice thing about the Metasploit script is this. Wintock has some peculiarities um, with its own with the Microsoft protocols that can sometimes be an issue with the Wintock version. Oh, there we go. Uh, with the Metasploit script with the different driver, you don't have that problem. So I really do like the Metasploit script. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of that session. Take a look at those hosts. Boom. All right, so that's now just 100 seconds. 
we have, let me get to here. Okay, so we have those printers from before. Looks like we were getting the service records, but not the text records, which has all the juicy details. So, uh, but we're interested in that second type of, you know, host that the tagger's interested in going after first. We saw the printers, printers showing up again. Oops. And uh, how about Windows? I need to move over. There we go. Kind of hard to see, but I think everyone can kind of get the idea. It doesn't fit the screen really well. So the second type of host that is usually the, uh, the first to go, Microsoft Windows. We have lots of those there. We have some more, uh, well, more printers. We have some iPhones and iPads, which I'll be showing you later. We have a network attached storage. It's advertising Seagate with the model there. We actually have some access cameras. I'm going to go down. There's a lot. Um, there we are. Access cameras, and because everything, uh, not everything fits on the screen, I'll move over here a little bit. All the names. What about those open ports, though? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. There are a lot. This screen resolution is really getting to me. Okay, so we have all the ports, 138, 5900, 5353, all the TCP UDP ports that are open. Let me go up. How's, how's the rate? Am I too fast? Okay, all right, I'll do that. So it just, it just goes up and up and up and up. That's 100 seconds. And remember, the longer you're collecting, the more, more open ports, you're gonna get more fingerprinting that you're gonna be able to do. So, it's very easy for PMAP to identify the targets an attacker is first interested in going after. Okay. So we have a local profile using executable. We have a remote profile uh, with the Metasploit script. And I'm actually going to go ahead and redo this probably a little bit later and put this thing up on YouTube because uh, everything wasn't really fitting on the screen too well, so you can see that. Now, it's important when you're using this to wonder and to think about, will they see an attacker coming during this sort of activity? And, and it turns out that traditional sensors, well, they're designed to see an attacker projecting inward toward a target. In this case, you have a target projecting outward to, to the attacker, so the sensors aren't really seeing this activity, not, not right now. They are interested in more active types of discovery, more active types of scans, so um, they really don't see this sort of activity, and uh, there's much to worry about with the IPS is right now. This means that as an attacker, the chase can begin, However, are there, are there obstacles between you and this host? The defenses that are traditionally in place to keep you away from, from your host that you're going after. It turns out that for the most part, they're not really applicable, either because they're out of scope or because they're not really appropriate for, uh, for this sort of activity. The thing that is closest would probably be port blocking, but it's just not deployed in a way that is effective right now. Uh, so it's really, it's not effective as far as this sort of activity. So they're really, these sort of defenses aren't much of an obstacle right now. So they can run, but they can't hide. This means the attacker, this is awfully gruesome, right? All this killing and death and, but um, the attacker can go looking for them, the next to die, the next to compromise, the next, uh, the next victim as it were. Now, we talked about other types of segments that there's exposure, therefore risk, and there are places like this that the attacker can then go with the tool to do, to stop more prey. So let's take a look real quick at what sort of host that PMAP is able to identify. Where's my error is? So this is that factory with that wireless network. 
able to identify quite a number of hosts. A lot of the first to go, we have the Windows, Windows, Windows. This, this particular factory had a lot of Microsoft Windows hosts there. This is all, nothing was cracked by the way, nothing was cracked to get all this stuff. So um, this is all advertised publicly as it were. And then so we have this, you know, the exposed uh, segment of the traditional corporate network, traditional uh, private corporate network. How about the more hybrid networks? You've got the corporate network that's private, and then you have the public network that is maintained for the customer. This is where it gets a little more interesting. Uh, we have a TiVo, the DVR TiVo, open ports. We have some iPhone, that's, this is all the BYOD, uh, iPad, iPhone iPhone, there's another undetermined host there, Kevin's iPad, another host there. Then we have a wireless access point, Apple Airport. And there are so many other hosts that I have not done a fingerprint for that are out there. That, that you know, when you start adding these fingerprints, you're going to see a lot more of this information being filled in. Dave's Airport Express, there. It's, I find it interesting because it's almost like they're, uh, they're, well, they're children. You know, they're named after them, and it's kind of cute. Uh, and you get to see people's interests. Because we have, there's Eva's iPad there. She's very proud of that iPad. Um, so we have a big fan of Harry Potter there, Hogwarts. Um, you find some interesting, I think someone here has a uh, host named Boba Fett, maybe? Yeah, Star Wars fan. So that's you know the hybrid networks. I call them hybrid networks. How about the truly public space? And this is important because your corporate assets are roaming into these areas uh, to be profiled. You have a lot of VUIRD as we saw a moment ago. Uh, speaking of you know the VUIRD, you have here a Samsung phone. Gee, this is a gift from SSDP, by the way. This sort of thing I'm printing. Uh, phone, it's a Samsung phone, GT N7000, Android uh, version 2.3.5, another iPhone. There's a newer one, uh, GTI uh, 9300, running Android 4.3.4. <coughs> These aren't the popular names, of course. No, I couldn't match up the ice cream sandwich with the version to save my life. Um, but there's an iPad there. Is everyone able to read those okay? There's, there's another Samsung phone. Oh yes, and there's one more down here. Talk, uh, speaking of starting to build that fingerprint database, we're seeing a lot of embedded devices, lots. Once you cover Windows, you know, app, you know Apple, Host, and Linux, you start getting down to a lot of really interesting stuff. We have down here an LG TV. A lot of embedded devices. We're seeing, uh, let me see, a lot more set-top boxes. We're seeing kiosks, lots of kiosks. We're seeing a lot of appliances, you know, AV, audio, visual, you know, service streaming out to these TVs. A lot of different things that I think are gonna make, uh, well, it's going to make using the tool really interesting. I think the things aren't necessarily going to be visible by an end map because it just, it's just too much of a niche. You know, but when you have these really direct advertisements, they don't need to be a niche because they're really telling you precisely you know, what they are. Okay. So those are some of the locations that you can you know, take the map. Begin stalking your prey, looking looking for victims. The factory, the hotel, uh, the mall. This means, of course, then it's you know time for the good stuff. It's time to begin uh, compromising these hosts because this is really this is passive information gathering. It's about building a foundation, starting with that information. Because at that point in time, then once you've gotten everything you can get passively, you then go active. And so you use PMAP. You can go active from that point in time, and you can poke, you can probe. The really nice thing about using PMAP is it can help you evade an IPS. Traditionally, well, one of the methods that 
and I guess we'll use to detect the scan or a port probe is the presence of ports in the packets. An address that, well, a packet that is going to an address well, that's dead. A packet that is going to a closed port, there is a reset back return, it triggers, boom, I've got a port probe going on, an uninformed host on the network. At this point in time in an attack campaign, if you've used PMAP, then you are sending packets to live addresses, open ports, so you're going to be able to get a lot further uh, a lot further, you know, in in the uh, information gathering phase, in the attack phase, uh, before having to worry so much about an IPS, you, you are going to be less likely to trigger an IPS because you are dealing with, you're interacting with the service as, for the most part, a regular user would be at that point in time uh, to get additional information. So you, you've built that foundation with PMAP, you've gone active, you've filled in everything you're ready to go, and then it's about exploiting and compromising these hosts. Now, this is a particularly interesting because the, if you remember the Android phones, the Android phones actually, they were living on a wireless access point that was run by a uh, mobile phone shop. Okay? So you've got these brand new phones that no one's purchased yet, they're just sitting there. You take the latest exploit, uh, you know, you can pre-root that phone uh, before it goes home, right? You can send it home pre-rooted. Uh, just consider it, uh, you know, extra, an extra service. And, and we are all, all, we are all here. We're all about customer service. And if it helps us out too, you know, so much the better. Uh, and then we have, of course, all that BYOD. You can take the latest exploit that's out there, the you know, for the iPad, the iPhone, the iOS exploits. And you can send them back to the corporate network with a surprise inside uh, for the you know corporate defenders. Right? So this becomes a very very versatile tool. You you know using this to gain footholds, footholds within the enterprise, outside the enterprise, and then you of course, of course can continue to fund. Right? This is all about starting out. This is all about building information, whether it's a campaign, and uh, you know so that's this really what PMAP is there to help you do. Now, we're reaching the end of the talk here, but I wanted to, before I went, to reveal the secret identity of uh, the typical attacker that was representing you know, a user of PMAP here. So the attacker is our, our good friend Mel Gibson there, who just can't seem to stay out of trouble with the law. And uh, he has uh, some parting words for us, some final thoughts. Hosts are now actively advertising their available tax service. It is great for passive information gathering. Information that can be used to discover, scan, and fingerprint them. And making later targeting and attacking easier. So that is the end. Uh, the tools will be up later today at the address there. Under the tool, tools option of the website menu there. And there are, those are the hashes. I suppose this presentation will be available later, right? So I, otherwise, I'll have to keep this up. But that's it. Um, if any, uh, anyone's interested, I did run the tool here earlier. Oh, yeah, question? Uh, it's on my, my list of to do. You know, um, there are many more protocols to be dug into. The SCADA protocol in particular, uh, the Windows protocols, you know, 138, the NIP, NIP BIOS uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, because obviously we're moving to IPv6, you need to consider that attack service. So yeah, eventually it will be there, but not right now. Uh, I have a question about uh, comparing uh, PMAP uh, against uh, the passive fingerprinting in, that's built into Etikap. Etikap, the tool. I don't know if you're familiar with Etikap, but it uh, has a availability to make, uh, to do passive fingerprinting, you know, without doing some injection or something, you know, to be so. I'm vaguely familiar with either cap, but it's probably in the category like, you know, POF and that sort of thing, right? Puff? Excuse me. One more time. P O F. 
POS. Is it, re is it redirecting traffic? No, uh, yeah, it's uh, our poisoning uh, to Ethica, but it, it's, uh, it has an ability to do passive uh, fingerprinting without uh, doing any injection or sending it. Okay. Sending it. And it uh, presents uh, similar information to Emma, but uh, I haven't fiddled around with it so much, but I was interested in if you had I, I have not. I have not. I, what first came to my mind was, you know, power for IFS, I found out to POF, 0F, something like that. Um, the things, you know, the tools that are poisoning are, or are some, in some, somehow being man in the middle, like they use that in IPS sometimes to fingerprint the host coming through. But no, I have not, but I will now. So. Thank you very much. What is your experience with uh, running uh, BMAP for an indefinite time? Does it add a lot of information, or do you have do you see the advertisements so regularly that it's not adding so much information? You see the advertisements pretty regularly. Uh, you're going to get kind of a base. You're going to get obviously the discovery of all the holes. You're going to see them. You'll start to see these open ports. Um, I would like to run it for an extended period of time. Someone mentioned the pineapple. Uh, box that you are able to kind of drop and be a wireless access point. So uh, I have not dropped it for a long period of time. Um, it, just, it just continues to collect. If you launch it for a long period of time, it will continue to collect and collect and add and add and add. Um, so it will just keep on building that database indefinitely. Any other questions? I'm sorry, I don't have any pastries, by the way. <laughs>